What's up, everyone? Welcome to another weekly episode of Fix My List. Oh, there it's we go. It's on, baby. That camera. Woo! Woo! All right. It is, in fact, time of the bug. Absolutely. Bug ascendant, as Absolutely. it were. Absolutely. We've got a new tier, new codex. We've let it settle for a little bit. People have started to cook up their lists, and that means it is time for another episode of Fix My List. I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't put it off for anything, you know? Absolutely. So if you're tuning in and maybe you're thinking, boy, I just like Tyranids. I've never watched Fix My List before. How about we tell them what it's all about? This is an episode where every week we take three lists submitted by our wonderful Art of War community in the Art of War Discord and we fix them. So people submit lists that are they're still workshopping, that they're in progress, that they want some feedback on. Yep. And we always do different themed episodes to make sure that every army feels loved. Except Eldar, they don't deserve to feel loved. Um, well, yes, you know. <laughs> but we still fix them. And, uh, and then we review the <laughs> All list. players feel very attacked. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, moving on. All right, so if they want to maybe submit a list to a future fix my list, how would they do that? Okay, so what you do is you got to be a member of the Art of War, the War Room. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're a member of the War Room, you can go through our website or through YouTube. Uh, you get on our Discord, and there's a channel called Fix My List Submissions. You put your list in there. And uh, could get it could get chosen. That's the Discord channel I look through when I pick lists out, and um, I just pick stuff that looks interesting, stuff that I think we can do good work with, Th stuff that I think that we could um, use as a as a object lesson of here is how to fix your own lists, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not just about us fixing three lists that helps three people. Um, it is also about showing like our thought process when we review lists, when we, mm -hmm. when we uh, revise lists Absolutely. and going through that. Absolutely. So make sure you just become a member of uh, either our YouTube channel or the worm and you can click on the link in the description below if you want to get a free trial of the worm to see how awesome it is. Uh, and then you can just submit your list and fix my list submissions and maybe it'll be the lucky one. Might be. Maybe it'll even receive the coveted golden star. The gold star is a rare reward. First off, you have to have been seen by me, which uh, once I find three lists, I, I do stop looking. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, you have to be seen. And then second off, you have to be too good of a list to fix. Yeah. If the list is too good and we cannot fix it enough to include on stream, like, you know, like 10 points here or whatever, um, it gets a gold star. And uh, that is probably the, the highest coveted award you can get. Absolutely. I still have never received a gold star. I think there's been like three gold stars. Because again, I have to I have to read the list. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because I read a list, I'm like, that's interesting. We're going to put that in. Read a list, that's interesting. Read a list, that's interesting. Nah, it's too good. Can't do it. Hmm. It's hard to do. Hard to all do. Right. So in this episode, we're going to be doing all Tyranid lists. Uh, we're covering three different detachments, three different Tyranid lists. And, uh, you know, just to celebrate the new codex and how hyped we are, especially me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been uh, uncomfortable. He's just been walking around in the book. Absolutely. Just, just, just holding the Tyranid Codex this whole time. Mm, yeah, green screen. Almost takes it out. Nice. Mm. All right. Well, I'm, I'm ready to get started. Absolutely. Let's you get know, into I think we've made people wait long enough. Let's, let's get into it. Let's get into our first list. All right. But if you want to get your list submitted, mm -hmm. Now is no better time. Uh, there's no better time than now. There's a three-day free trial in the War Room down in the link below. You can check out everything we have, everything mm -hmm. we're about. We have tactical videos that help out your game. Watch all of that and, uh, yeah, submit your list. All right, let's do it. All right. Woo! Joel Kirk! He's, Joel Kirk. Uh, he's in the chat. He saw his list was up because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I clicked to the wrong screen first. Whatever. All right, Joel Kirk, why, uh, why don't you tell me what... Is, uh, is in this list while I look up any comments, yes. Absolutely. So we've got Death Leaper, a winged Hive Tyrant with Hunting Grounds, a winged Tyranid Prime with Neuronode, two of the uh, Vanguard Onslaught Enhancements, because that is, in fact, the detachment we're doing. Then we have one Lictor, two Neuralictor, one, two, three units of Gargoyles, uh, one unit of Neurogods, one, two, three units of three Pyrovores. Joel, I love you. Uh, a small unit of three Melee Warriors, then we're getting into the big stuff, and that is an egg screen, two Maliceptors, one Trigon, a Biovor, and three Solo Ripper Swarms. Unfortunately, Joel's name in our Discord is not actually Joel Kirk. So, um, I, think, I'm, I thought it was. It's his like, screen name. It's not pulling Oh, up. got it, got it, got it. Well, I didn't, I don't recall seeing any comments because I, uh, yeah, John was the uh, was, was the, the the node beast on this one. I'm always the node beast. <laughs> <laughs> he was the neurolictor running in and uh, scouting ahead of time. 
Absolutely. Okay, so what do we think about this list? All right, so let's start by looking at what the Vanguard is telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Because the Tyranid Detachments, now I say the Tyranid Codex, but we don't really know whatever else it's going to bring. But the Tyranid Codex Detachments really like to point you in a direction, slap you on the back and say, go get him, Chief. That's what you're doing. Because the you don't really take the Vanguard Onslaught and then put Carnifex in it, if you get what I'm saying. Yet, I'm seeing a Vanguard Onslaught with only... With one you know, lictors, one lictor, two neuro lictors, and uh, that that's it. That's it. Death Leaper. Yeah. So that's what I'm about to get at. Is that right. the the Vanguard onslaught possibly has the best rules of any tyranny detachment, but it affects very specialized units, and it affects basically everything sneaky and everything with wings. So the the winged hive tyrant, the winged tyranid prime, and a unit of joints. Uh, the 30 Gargoyles, all the Lictors, all of that does like being in the Vanguard on some Oh, okay. Time. All right. See, so, yeah, there's, there's a decent amount there. All of that gets fall back, uh, gets advanced in charge. Everything else gets fall back in charge. And then all the stratagems are usually at their best on the uh, the winged or sneaky stuff, but they can actually be used on some other things as well, depending on the stratagem. Like some of them say one infantry or two Vanguard, stuff like that. Got it. Um, so the Vanguard isn't one of the worst attachments to branch out in. Not like Crusher Stampede, where you literally have to be a monster to get a roll. Everything else gets zero, zilch, nada. Yeah, they uh, have Vanguard to at least the gives, of their data sheets. Yeah, Vanguard at least gives something to everyone else. Um, but looking at this, uh, I think we're being a little too timid, is, is my first thought here. I okay, think that we're not that. taking enough of the actual Vanguard units. Because uh, the strength of the Vanguard onslaught in my mind is the advance and charge, and it's the, the stratagems. And the enhancements are quite good as well, but the enhancements are usually things that are situational. They're very good when they're doing their thing, but after that, they don't affect anything. Like, you get a great redeploy with Neuronoid, which is amazing, but after turn one, that stops mattering. Right. You know, it turns two through five. Is just, this the real redeploy? This is like it's after... The, oh, it's the good redeploy. It's the after it's the you know who's going one. first redeploy. Oh, right? yeah. Yes. That is best redeploy in the game. Yes. Not not actually close. All the other redeploys kind of suck. Mm -hmm. um, but if you redeploy before you know who's going first, it's like a funny, you know, ha ha, you didn't expect me to be on this flank. Now I'm over... Whatever. That's nonsense. Nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, but after you know who's going first, perfect information. Ugh, that is strong. That is very strong. Yeah. So... This list looks like it is a, a really nice smattering of scoring units. I mean, we've got Ripper Swarms, we've got the Biavor, we've got Gargoyles. We have a lot of the, the scoring architect units, which is, again, you know, Rippers, Gargoyles, and a Biavor. Uh, you have basically the max of those. Uh, but I feel like this list lacks a little bit of punch, and I feel like it lacks a real reason to be Vanguard. Because I'm going to be honest here, we've got units that are benefiting from advance and charge. The Winged Hive Tyrant with the giant asterisk of does this guy actually want to be in combat? We'll talk about that later. What, is he not good in combat? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Surely yeah? the guy who could cut like three knights in half last edition, he can surely muster the strength to do one, right? Sure, one? Surely he could kill a rhino. You would think so. Ooh, that is... Yeah, that's where the bars are. I actually right? don't know very much about like data sheets from Tyranids. The Winged Hive Tyrant doesn't hit hard. No, he's six attacks at nine, two, three. Twin linked. Oh. But the AP two really gets you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. No, now I remember the the foot hive tyrant uh, kind of hitting like a like yeah. soft. soft yeah, that, that, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. The winged hive tyrant doesn't do much in combat, so it doesn't really benefit from advance and charge. He's mostly there for free strats. Just hitting like a pool noodle. Absolutely. Then we've got a winged tyranid prime and three warriors. Which is a decent melee unit, but it's also kind of cheap. You know, that's that unit uh, is coming in at like 180. A, yeah, 180, and of those 180 points, 30 of them are on enhancement. Like, it's a 150 point melee unit, it's fine. Um, I feel like we don't have enough stuff here to really benefit from the advance and charge. And then I feel like we also don't have enough units to benefit from the, the stratagems. Because the amazing stratagems that we've got with the Vanguard. Uh, some of the notable ones are like plus one to hit in melee that also causes a battle shock. Could be in shooting as well. Plus one to hit in shooting or melee cause a battle shock test. Uh, that one you can use here. Uh, lone op a unit. That's awesome. But lone oping like a gargoyle unit or your one warrior unit while there's nine pyrovores getting shot. It, it saves one unit from getting shot. It doesn't stop your opponent from firing. I like lone op stuff that stops your opponent from getting to shoot. Not lone op stuff that says, whatever, I'm not going to shoot the one unit on the objective. Instead, I'm just going to shoot 
the Exocrine, the Malice Scepter, the nine Pyrovores that take up so much room that you cannot hide them all. Because 80 mil bases are big. And at that point, if I'm like, wait, if I'm are just using... 80 mils? Pyrovores are on 80 millimeter bases, dude. Jesus, they've only gotten bigger. Uh, the Pyrovore is on the same size base as an Armored Sentinel. <laughs> and if you look at its stats, you would think, wow, that's a worse Sentinel. And then you remember it's 30 points a model and you forgive it completely. Yeah. It, I mean, there is a certain amount of... like, There's something to be said for just taking up space. Like, mm -hmm. like it, it's a downside, but it's also an upside. Yeah. Because if you take up space on the board, your opponent doesn't get to be there, but you also don't get to hide. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, there's, there's pros and cons, and I feel like taking up space is not what a Vanguard Onslaught list is trying to do, because this list is not particularly durable. It's not trying to take punches. It's trying to avoid them. Yeah, the whole point is that it's got sneaky redeploys, it's faster than normal, and it can loan up a unit. But you can't loan up the Pirate Wars. So like, yeah, you could loan up a Gargoyle on an objective, but at that point, objectively, wouldn't you just put a Neuralictor there instead? The Neuralictor's natively loan up? Yeah. So what's the best unit you can loan up? Is it Von Ryan's? Uh, no, I actually think it's the, uh, the Warriors with, uh, the Winged Tyranid Prime. Because the Winged Tyranid Prime, so the Warriors are just dudes on foot. They have no relevant keywords at all. But the Winged Tyranid Prime has the Vanguard, uh, Invader keyword because he has wings. So if you attach him... Yeah, 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 You get yeah, a keyword yeah. in the unit. How big can you make the unit? Is it locked You can make it three? six. You can okay. make it six, man. Are we looking at the six man with the Winged Tyranid Prime to oh, just we're be looking like... at two of those. Stop. We're stop at, shooting at me. We're looking at two. How hard do they hit? Uh, that very much depends on if you're battle shocked. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they actually do hit pretty decently. So they're, they're six attacks each. No, I'm just saying like weird Tyranid nonsense coming out of the woodwork oh, here. Oh, absolutely. They're six attacks each at five, two, one, twin linked. With six a, attacks each? Six attacks each. With sustained hits, one, and they can choose to reroll ones to hit in melee or saves. You always choose the hits because they don't have saves. Then... You, yeah, it's the same thing as like Blade Guard. Then you very easily, you have a battle tactic, so it can be free, to get plus one to hit in melee. So hit on twos, reroll ones, reroll their wounds with sustained. Six it, attacks apiece is like six attacks, seven hits, reroll wounds. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of AP2 damage one. It is. It's a lot. If your opponent is battle shocked, it's very easy to also get plus one to wound then. And once you get the plus one to wound is the point where you actually like on average do like 19 damage to a knight. That's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Yeah. So yes, so if you have something that makes a unit loan off, mm -hmm. loan operative, can't be shot with outside of 12 inches, you want to put that on a really good scary unit if possible. And mm -hmm. that unit is uh, probably the best that fits yeah. the bill. Or, or, or you want to put it on the only thing that would get shot. Yes. Or on a good, like a good shooting unit and have that be mm -hmm. something your opponent can't answer. Unfortunately, that last option is available to CSM and CSM only. Okay. Um, not to Tyranids. But mm -hmm. good, powerful threat, you can do that, and then you can also hide with the Gargoyles. Yep. Yeah, Gargoyles are small enough footprint that if you jumble them together into a barrel of monkeys pile of wings, then you can actually hide them behind walls because they're only on like 30 mil bases. Yep. You can hide 10 of them, even if it's a little effort. So I'm, you're saying we're adding... I feel like that unit needs to be bigger. And like, that is 170 points. 170, yep. Okay. Um, to so me, that feels me, like the better. Let me build one. this list in... Uh, oh, yeah. You, in, got, you want to get it or you want me to get it? You can get it. Okay, perfect. Might be yeah. a little easier because I know where all this is going. Unfortunately, I did not realize the app does not give you the data sheet on the unit. Oh, uh, yeah. You have to do the, the QR code, why, unfortunately. Why and the hell did I pay a subscription for this thing? You need to buy the codex now. Unfortunately, I've already used the, the code in this I, I'm certain. Yeah, that was <laughs> that one wasn't making it all the way down the house. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, no, no, man, the warriors are not damaged too. If no. if they were, I would have 18 in this list. Yeah. Yeah, that would just be happening. Um, all right. So do, 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 do. Um, well, let's look at things that we want to cut though. I I actually do love pyrovores, and there is a really good trick that this detachment has which is that one of its strats is to put an infantry unit or two vanguard units in reserve. So I actually like having one three-man power war. So you can just re Yeah, I think uh, I was about to say make the other ones one-mans. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, let's go to the undo, the undo button. button. Yep, because that, that'll free up 120 points right there. Also, let's be clear, each power war is 30 points and $50. So totally up to you on if you want to do that, but yeah. I know... That yeah, you I, before the stream you were complaining to me and Quentin about how you you bought three uh, pyrophores like for yeah, retail. Yeah, and you three, were like, I'm I, so mad about this. I didn't want to 
I couldn't buy nine. <laughs> it's because, because you, you already don't... have nine pyro cores. Yeah, they're they're just old, the old and terrible. Portable. I'm not doing that anymore. Okay. Um, so that frees up 120 points, which means we're currently ahead. Um, I still do want us to have more, a little more, uh, you know, Vanguard action in here. Okay. Is um, the Trigon Vanguard? The Trigon is not. So Nerd. The, the trick here with the Trigon, and I'm pretty sure the reason that it's here, is that it can do the three inch deep strike. And so it's just good for, it, like, it's not synergizing directly with any of your rules, but it's synergizing with your plans. Yeah, so you can um, you can rapid three? Yep, and you yep. could, in a pinch, although I don't think this is ever going to come up, you could pay a CP to deep strike in turn one. Oh, and it's not nothing, right? Yeah. If you go uh, if you go first, your opponent goes second, you can rapid, in, or not rapid ingress, you could deep strike him. You or no, if your opponent goes first. If your opponent goes first, they move on to an objective, you can just take it on bottom of one. And yep, you could do that. Um, prevent them from scoring Or if points. you're just trying to, like, threat overload them. But the thing is that... One of the reason that I don't like the Trigon here is that this list is not trying to threat overload people because it doesn't have anything that infiltrates other than Lictors. And Lictors are not threat overload. Got it. No, um, Lictors are... If you are... had like 18 Von Ryans and you go first, you charge with all 18 and then you deep strike a Trigon turn one and it really may be a, ooh, I actually don't want to deal with that right now. Whole other question. Although for the record, I don't think that's a good idea. No, I, I think there's plenty of armies who are like, Okay. Well, <coughs> ideally against those armies, you don't do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ideally, you figure it out in advance that that's not, uh, okay. yeah, that's not the plan. So where are we taking... The, the part that sticks out to me, right? Like, scoring nonsense. Right? They're always good. Scoring Gen nonsense. Great. We've got this, which feels great. I really do love. want to have a second mm -hmm. Tyranid Prime with Warriors. That that does sound great. Death Leaper is always obnoxious and great. Yep. Um... This is the part that stands out to me, as to like not fitting the theme. It definitely doesn't fit the theme, but I think that you do need an amount of gun yes. in order to play a KG army. Yeah. Exocrines and Malceptors are quite good. Yeah. Here's the question, though: What are we? How are we getting in this second warrior unit? Because um, I do agree, I think we need it. Yeah, for the I, punch. I think that if we're trying to minimize footprint here, um, I honestly think that we are cutting the Malceptors. Which makes me very sad, but I think that having access to a few long-range guns is going to be enough here. We're not trying to have the guns take hits. What are we looking for? To, what are we looking to replace them with? Um, like, because you said long-range guns, at least can... one more warrior unit, okay. and uh, we could do an exocrine. We could do a zone drop unit. Um, so there's just to kind of pitch what makes these valuable. Zone drops are awesome because it is a six man is one big unit of uh, infantry that you can again put into reserves at any point and come back in. So zone throps are kind of slow, but you just have a zone throw sitting on the side or in reserves, whatever. You could bring it in turn one, snipe someone down an angle. You could leave it in reserves until it's needed. Again, deep strike, kind of snipe down an angle. It's not supported, so you just try not to get it killed and just get the damage you get because you don't have as much support as another high fleet. But then if your opponent just says, hmm, a zone throw squad all the way in the middle of nowhere that I can't really hit back, whatever, I'll just stay out of range. Then you pick it up, bring it in off a different board edge, keep shooting. Yes. And if Joel wants to run the Maliceptors, they are not bad units. You just probably don't want to run them in a Vanguard Onslaught. Yeah, I, I still really like Maliceptors. Yes. Clear. I love Maliceptors. I had two of them in my Vanguard Onslaught. But I think that you're not trying to have a couple units run forward and take the hits while the rest of your army hides, because then your opponent's just going to kill the couple of Brawlers in the middle and say, cool, you're out of beef. Are we taking... We're taking another Winged Tyranid Prime. Another Winged Tyranid Prime, and you can just remove the... I uh, already did remove the enhancement. I uh, cut him down to 65 points. 30 points? I mean, I get it. It's, like, it's six, good. It's the best it's really, in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's real good. But, uh, damn, that is expensive. Yep. Um, so let me just get a, a quick tally on this, because I actually think this... I think, honestly, a calculator is going to be faster than the app at this point, because I already know how many points all this costs. Yeah, yeah. So well, the app I usually... I just didn't this time. Need to usually have the list in the app already. Mm -hmm. um, fair, but, fair, fair. Plus 60, whoops. plus, no, no, you're good. Plus 130, plus 75, 1, 2, 3, awesome, plus the Nergaunt unit, who I don't think is going to end up staying, but we'll we'll kind of decide on that later. Yeah, I don't know if they're 150 necessary. points of Pyrobores, love that. 340 points of Warriors, great. 
135. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to add that Trigon if you just want to hit delete on that boy. <laughs> you don't like the Trigon? I, I I just don't think he is synergizing with the game plan here. So we're at 1680. We're at 1680. So we have 320 points left. Let me start, honestly. I think one Zone Thorpe unit is awesome in Vanguard. Just because it can go up and down. Exactly. You can reserve it so that it gets to deliver into position. And then you could always turn one, bring it in if your opponent tries to stat check you. So you have the threat of, like, it's not like a, oh, your reserves aren't going to come in this turn. I might 220. You know, I'll try to rush you down. No, 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 no. The zone throps will show up and shoot. And then they can just bounce around the corners of the board just sniping people. Um, yeah. I think that's great. So we do that, and we're at 1,900. Um, I really wish we could, if we could find 35 points somewhere, anywhere. Really, anywhere, yeah. We could get a second exit crin. Done. That's already happening. So plus 135, minus 45, because the Neurogaunt unit's coming out. And yeah, I do not see any yeah. reason at all to get the... I think when, when you have 30 Gargoyles, we're at the point where you can not only deep strike them, and, like, but start them on the board as well. You can have units that start on the board, because th these units are like ridiculously fast. Yes. Uh, they get advanced and charge here, so they, and they have assault weapons. So they can theoretically go 12 plus D6 inches, shoot and charge, or 12 plus D6 inches, fire their gun, and then fire and fade 6 inches forward. They're OC2, so it's a very fast move block. It's a yes. very good screen, or it can deep strike nine away, fire their guns, you know, scoot six inches, get a really close up move block and contest play. Uh, so having gargoyles on the field and in reserves is awesome. I just don't think you need Norgon to that Here's point. a here's a quick, uh, mm -hmm. quick easy question for you. Hopefully, yes. Two well, two part. One hunting grounds. Is this necessary? Oh yeah, this thing's great. What does it do? Hunting grounds is like fifteen or twenty points. I know that it's an enhancement. I'm willing to spend. And every time an enemy unit arrives from reserves. You roll a dice. On a 2+, plus, that unit takes a Battle Shock test. And let me be clear that uh, when I say arrives from reserves, I also mean redeploy, set up by a Biovore, teleport. If you go up, down, if you get placed on the table by anything other than a normal move or a disembark, you're taking a Battle Shock test. It's pretty good. And it's very funny. Uh, fun fact, I killed an Incarn with that because it arrived and Battle Shocked immediately. And then my army is plus one to win against it. Bang! <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's pretty good. That's pretty funny. Um, uh, second, also, the trolliest Gene Storkel attack of all time because they're still real. Yes, Gene Storkel are still a very real army. You have to you have to play um, for it. Well, Here's you, a second question. You're cutting to what I'm going to do with half of my last ten points. Um, uh, is it is it turn the winged hive tyrant into this combo? The winged tyrant of prime plus warriors. Oh, you know it actually wasn't that. I was actually I thought you were pointing at a lifter. Um, okay, no, so the Lictor, that was the other thing. 5.6 Elictor to a third Neuro Lictor. What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, okay. That was... Um, we all know where this is going. Yes. So, the... the A third Warrior and Wing Tyrant combo. So, what the Tyrant brings, other than being a guy that carries the Enhancement, which that Enhancement could go on the other Wing Tyrant Prime, so he's not unique in that role. Yeah. A Wing Tyrant Tyrant lets you double up on a Battle Tactic Stratagem. Which, in this is... Oh, surprise assault. It's... You haven't had to deal with my shenanigans yet, so let me explain this to you. That's um, true. It's, it's great. You haven't... This, this is so funny. So there, there's only one really good battle battle tactic in here. Uh, the other one, for what it's worth, is give your unit give a unit precision, which is cool. You can have a warrior unit just gain a precision and kill every Necron character in the game. It's awesome. I've done that. That is very fun. It's really fun. That is very fun. It's very fun. So but funny. that doesn't come up that often. So what you normally do is you pop Surprise Assault. Surprise Assault is... Um, God, this is so silly. Okay, so pick a Vanguard Onslaught unit in the shooting phase, in your shooting phase or the fight phase. Then pick an enemy unit. You are plus one to hit against it, and it takes a battle shock test. If it fails that battle shock test, also plus one to wound. That's the entire limitation of the stratagem. So let me know when you figure out what's happening here. If the enemy is battle shocked, the unit you picked is plus one to hit and plus one to wound against it. It's always plus one to hit. The unit you picked is plus one to wound if it fails that battle shock test, not any battle shock test. That battle shock test. You're you're going in the wrong direction. So let me help you out here. There's no limit here, like a unit you're about to attack, a unit in range. Right. So theoretically. Yeah, you just go. I have. Whoop. Yeah. So picture this. It's your turn. You just drew. Wait a minute. No. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of sequence being like, hey, this turn you're going to take three Battleshock tests. Have fun. Yes. 
Yeah. Yep. And it's before any targeting. So if th think, for example, if you had a Terminator squad that runs up on me and says, I'm about to pop armor contempt. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Real fast. Yes. Can you throw a spore mine forward? And then off of that spore mine, go, this turn you're going to take three battle shocks. No, well, what do you mean off of this spore mine? There's no range There's or no line range of sight. There's no range requirement? No. That's just... my point. It's not something you're about to attack. It's pick a vanguard, pick an enemy. Anywhere on the table. Anywhere on the table. And they just... So let me, let me tell you something I did in a game with my vanguard. So my opponent drew um, uh, extend battle lines. And at the end of their turn... I said, hey, you only have one unit on your home objective. I'm going to have the Neuralictor on my home objective challenge him and say, I'm plus one to hit against you, take a battle shock test. And then he failed that, and I said, cool, you don't hold your home objective right now, you don't score except that lines. What? Why is it so poorly written? Uh, that's, that's a GW's fault thing. That's GW's problem, honestly. Oh, God. So with I'm, the... I'm picturing like that meme of like with the different types of headaches, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole head one is listening to John explain why a rule has no restrictions. <laughs> Look, man, ask GW. So I, I do think that this is ripe for an FAQ. It really is. Yes. But as it is... And you know what? And if that stratagem gets FAQ'd, since it's one of the only two battle tactics you have access to in this attachment, I could really revisit that Hive Tyrant. Until then, I'm going to have my Tyrant in your fight phase every turn just be like, ah, well, why I'm, while I'm here, let's just pick a unit for free to take a battle. You know, take a battle shock test. That is really obnoxious. So if you think of the Hive Tyrant less as I mean, a... But even if you take out the Tyrant, right? You just spend a CP on that. Yeah, counterpoint, spend the CP and then do the tyrant so that it's two battle shock tests in case they pass the first one. Yeah, no, that's one, pretty once good. Once you're throwing two on, suddenly it's like the odds of failing are much better, right? You take an intercessor squad, it probably passes. Make it take two, probably fails. In your turn, you do it shooting phase, fight phase, free fight phase. And now it's three battle shock tests, and it is very likely that this unit is failing a battle shock test before I target it and it gets to take armor contempt. Or before because it gets it's to reanimate taking, models. Because it's also taking two in your fight phase. You push a Terminator unit at me. I say, cool, your fight phase, one CP, one free. Two battle shock tests. You pass both of them, no problem. My shooting phase, take a battle shock test. My fight phase, take a battle shock test, take a free battle shock test. You've taken five battle shock tests before I roll an attack against you. That's pretty damn at good. At some point, you're going to fail, and Armor of Contempt is going to go away, and then the warrior units are plus one to win. Because the Neuralictor is an aura of plus one to wound against Battleshocked units, so you just put a Neuralictor 11.9 away from the unit you're about to Battleshock. And if they fail any of the five, the war unit is now plus one to hit, plus one to wound, and you don't get to um, uh, use any strats. And that's when the warrior unit actually kills six Deathwing Knights in an activation. Well, yeah, minus one damage doesn't have anything on damage one. I, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly... And they also that... can't redeploy... They, they can't, also they, can't redeploy. They can't run D6 away. And yep, you've... none of that. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's not beat around the bush. Um, yeah. I mean... If someone in the chat asked me, oh, how many Neuralictors are going to be in the list? As many as we can fit. Uh, legally, that's three. Legally, that's three. And I think that is a good 1995 right there. I think it is. I really, if I were playing this list, I would try to crowbar in a third warrior unit somewhere. Yeah, you, you could do it. Um, it's basically like an Exocrine and a Gargoyle unit, and then you cut like a Pyrovore here or there or something. Yeah. Um, you very much could crowbar in a third warrior unit if you're just like, let's go. But I find that they do, they, they aren't solving everything because you can't send multiple warrior units in as one at once because you can't get everything battle shocked at once reliably. Yeah. Now, obviously, if everyone is battle shocked, you go hit all of them and it's awesome. Um, but. Because then they're not interrupting. But it, it is obnoxious, but it's very funny. And I love it. And that's what matters most. Yep. Uh, that is where I would end that list. That list looks... It's very fun. It's very funny, for sure. It is and it leans funny. very heavily into the things that the arm that this detachment is good at. Yeah. Right? Like, Warriors smacking you in the face. Bunch of battle shock checks. Mm -hmm. Two exocrines so that you can actually play the game. Uh, and zoanthropes, so you can you know show up and abuse infantry nonsense to teleport around your stuff. Mm -hmm. Seems good. Yeah. And for those asking in the chat, yes, you can use surprise assault for free and target an enemy unit. Yes, you can do that. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, Joel, have fun with that. Um, we'll see if we can silence our Discord notifications because that might don't be us. See that up anywhere. Um, but uh, until then, 
Ready for list number two? Yeah, absolutely. All right. List number two. This one is from Corkin. The Unending Swarm. So yep. Kit Smith, Hannah, in the Art of War Discord. Appreciate you sending this one it's in. take us over here this, for one second. This is the list that I looked at and I said, geez, I really don't want to go through it. But you know what? That made me realize that we need to. That's right. Because this is very different than how I've been playing the Tyranny Codex so far. And I kind of I kind of was looking forward to the challenge on this one because I thought this would be this would actually be kind of difficult to fix. Um, you ready? Yes. Do you know what the Unending Swarm does? No, all? I do all not. Right, let Explain me, it to me, John. This is the weird one. This is like... This is the, the one that makes you clock out on turn two if you don't know what you're doing. This is the this is the one that Australia is taking to WTC 2024. Yeah, not a doubt in my mind. No, Team Australia hat. Just pick your other seven list. We know what you're doing. They have not seen a weird swarm list that they that they have not fall deeply in love with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me. Jesus, how many models is this? It's a lot. Is uh, this is 200 Gants? Uh, I think it's 180. And then no, it's the oils. clean. Well, yeah, I was, oh, I was yeah, including yeah, yeah. the gargoyles in there. Yeah, it's gotcha. the clean 200 little idiots. Yeah, clean 200. So this is the this is very trolly, and it's very good. So the Unending Swarm, just for everyone watching, maybe doesn't understand what this thing is doing. The rule is it's only for the Endless Multitude, which is all the gods. So just, I'm just going to say swarms from now on. Um, every time your opponent shoots you and kills at least one model, you get to make a surge move. A surge move every every single time. Every single time, not in the shooting phase. Every single time. Is it once per phase? Nope. Got it. A surge move is they roll d6. They move that many inches. They have to end the unit. Has to end the move as close as possible to the closest enemy unit. This could take them in engagement range. I'm sensing a theme with Tyranids of poorly written <laughs> rules. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, no, no. You, you, let, me, let me give you the, the next layer of, of bull. No, no, no. I, 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 know, I, I know where this is going. Explain oh, it to okay. the chat. It's the difference between models and units right here. That is, that is yes. the next thing. <laughs> so the unit has to end as close as possible. That means that you find the single closest model in the now 19-man got unit. Right. And you find the closest enemy, and you have to move that in a straight line there. The rest of the, the unit has to maintain coherency. Which, technically, it doesn't even say surge moves have to end a coherency, but we're just ignoring that because no. No, you have to end a coherency. Is it, is it say, a normal move? Nope. It's a surge move. It's not a normal move. It's a surge move, which allows it to go into engagement range. Awesome. Yep. Okay. So, carry on. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, the at least one model has to go closer. Uh, the rest of the models yeah. have to maintain coherency. To be clear, it's not closer. It's as close as possible. As close as so possible. So, it is a straight line for one. But they have an incredibly good stratagem that I believe is a battle tactic. And it's one CP after you roll for a surge move. Go ahead and uh, you check can that codex. re-roll the D6 you just rolled, and huh, strategic ploy. That's that's actually for the better. Good. So not a battle tactic. That's fine. Um, you can re-roll the um, the D6, and instead of ending towards the closest model, you can choose to end as close as possible to the closest objective marker. Yeah, a boy. Yeah, this is not written <laughs> in the way it needs to be written. So again, you just start on an objective and just say, wow, I end as close as possible. Already there. Anyways, we're moving. Yeah, so one model has to stay there. One model. But the rest of the unit can do whatever the hell it wants. Whatever the hell it wants. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Um, From that point, which is very good, you have a, um, a bucket of enhancements that don't actually impress me that much. Then you've got uh, basically a lightning fast reflex for Gaunt's. You have a, a two CP bringing unit that was dead back to life. Um, you have you do have a, some good battle tactics, being the minus one to hit and the um, uh, one CP get sustained hits, and if you're a fifteen man unit, you also get critical fives, which is awesome. So they they clearly designed this to be like a all right. Here's two hundred dudes, and they're all running directly at you, and the more you shoot them, the more directly at you they will move. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, what they have done is written a, uh, a detachment where it's all two OC models that get to kind of go in whatever direction they want with some very small limitations they have to get around, yeah. um, which is fine. I don't think they're like that tough, right? No, they're T3, one wound, have a five up armor, very easy to get cover, minus one to hit and shooting, usually have a six up end on the finger of the Zanthropes. And they kind of come back to life. Kind of but not, life. like, at the same speed you'll kill them. This is not No, 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 no. No, it's, it's 2 CP to replenish a unit, and that's not a stratagem that can be free. Yeah. So, like, you're... 
And at least it's after you shoot. They move after you shoot them rather than before, like Eldar. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, one other stratagem that I feel it is important to note right now is that they do have one CP take your blast weapon and say no. Oh, it stops being blast. Uh, they count as less than five models for the purpose of blast. Well, blast luckily, speed. there are ten units that you can target. <laughs> So um, if one of them becomes no blasty, then the other ones will become blasty blasty. Yeah, so it's mo mainly as soon as your opponent like commits a big blast weapon somewhere, then yeah. you just be like, stop. Because um, if you get them, because here's the thing, if you get them to like split fire to force out the stratagem, then everyone moves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, desolators are not uh, keeping this under control anymore, huh? Nope, yeah, splitting fire, bad idea. Everyone moves. That's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, right? It's pretty funny. Um, so let's... Are they required to take the surge move? You may, but once you roll the dice, you have to. Got it. Um, and yeah, and you know what? Fair, just so that Jack, you know, uh, there is the data sheet rule Akil pointed out in the chat as well. If you get within nine of a termagant, they move D6 inches. So like, it's just buckets of, buckets of fun here. Okay, so if you play this person... Yes. If you play into... If you're playing as this person, please get your reps. But if you play into this person... Bring a chess clock. Do a chess clock app on your phone. I, I don't care. Yeah. All right? Because otherwise, if they don't know what they're doing, they will take nine-tenths of the time, and you guys will end on turn two. Because, unfortunately, an army with 200 models that moves in their turn and then moves twice in your turn is going to take a while. Yeah. It is very funny. I have seen people play this and try to be on time. Um, we'll find out if they get to succeed. So, um... We can talk about optimal termagant loadout later. I'm just going to go ahead and say spine fist and four special weapons. Um, but we don't really need type decks. Everything's free. Here's where I'm at right now. Is I'm looking at this list and I want... We already have 120 termagants, which is the maximum legal cap. And that's what we're doing here. That's That, that part's staying. Yes. I personally don't know if I love the hormagants. What do horms do? Hormagants are advanced and charge built in. Three attacks each at 3-1-1. Yes, when they're a 15 or more man, you can spend one CP or even free for sustained hits and critical fives. I but, feel like most of the time this unit is not making it in as a 15 man. Yeah, that, that seems right. Um, and I just look at that and I think, boy, I would rather be a gargoyle for 20 points. You get plus two inches of movement, the fly keyword, and you fire and fade. What are these... What are these zoanthropes in here for? Do they give, they give us six of Enlil? I uh, actually don't think that's necessary. Because <laughs> I think one zoanthrope unit is hard to reach. There's also the fact that they have a five up save, right? They're going to have cover almost every time. Yes. If your opponent is putting AP3 into you... Well, there's nowhere else to put it, to be clear. Then they are uh, being not that efficient, right? Laz cannons do not want to... Turbo Roast 1 Gaunt. Yeah, and I'm not willing uh, to pay for a 6-up against it. <clears throat> I know what would absolutely stomp on Nick's weird CSM 3 units of Havocs in a Land Raider list. This also is an incredibly hilarious Eldar counter. Yeah, they have a Bright Lance that does not a goddamn thing. Yeah, there is no there is no proper speed with which you clear this with Eldar. doesn't happen. No. Uh, their and spider... every, every one of those um, battle line guys is OC2, of course. Their spiders have to uh, do a lot of work and not die. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, rough. So looking at this, we have a clean 200 bodies. We will determine if that's the right number, mainly by what support pieces we think are necessary. Let's go ahead and run down the support pieces real quick. Yes. Death Leaper and two Neurolictors. Great, they're lone ops. I love lone ops. I love lone ops with four up invulns. I love lone ops with four up invulns that give me plus one to wound, minus one to hit to my opponent, minus one leadership to my opponent, and cause battle shock tests. I want some neurolictors in my army. They stay. They seem they're great. good. They're, I want yep, them. The neurolictor is the best data sheet we have. It's awesome. Uh, the Turvagon. What does the Turvagon do? It is beyond the fact that it heals D3 plus three Termagants in a unit, but it's, it's only bad. in one unit, and it's 190 points. The main thing is that it is an aura of lethal hits for termagants while that in itself is good where it gets real good is when you combine that with the battle tactic for critical hits on fives i mean do termagants are we pretending that termagants do damage here like what are we doing yes oh god no he's unlocked his like oh, i take a 30 man swarm of devil gaunts like does this actually do damage or does this yes. like... so 20 termagants puts out 
the Spine Fists, which are assault weapons inherently, which is really sweet, that is put good. out 32 shots. So you're going to get critical hits on um, fives, sustained hits, twin linked. Which means that on so a lethal rhino, sustained fives, which is a very, very good rules combination for sure. Yep. So I believe that you average about 16 saves to a rhino with the spine fist portion of this. And then you shoot them with the um, uh, the 2d3 blast shots, which will probably just put like another two saves on. It's still AP dash, like 18 saves there. And then you shoot it with the um, uh, the uh, strength webs, which is just 2d6, 18 inch assault dev wound uh, torrent weapons. What? <laughs> it's two 18 inch warp spider guns that are assault. Oh, that's. And between, by the time you get through that, a unit of termagants averages about eight damage to a T6 plus three up save unit. Huh. And okay. That, and that's the point where right. you're like, oh, maybe this. I mean, you have to spend a strat for that. To be sure. fair. Well, that's a to battle tactic. So if there were a tyrant here, it could be free and you could do it twice. I don't know if a tyrant is what we want because a tyrant is a lot of points in a list that is running very threadbare on support if we're not cutting the 190 point duder. Uh, that is true. Yeah, I wasn't going to cut the 190 point duder. Yeah. If you're not cutting the 190 point duder, we need to cut, what, 200 and change points? Yes. So th there is an argument for not taking it. Um, and we also are looking to upgrade Hormagons to Gargoyles already? Uh, well, I don't think we're going to end up with 200 bodies, to be clear. You, I don't like that. Okay, well, sorry. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so that's the argument for Termogods doing damage. Okay. Even with that argument, I think we, there's still a very good argument for just saying, screw that nonsense, we get 190 more points of worth of duders. Because they are OC2, and you just run on gribble all over objectives. I like Command Phase Heals a lot as well. Yeah, I think the Termogons a decent support pack for 190. Yeah, I think, I think you keep it just because it's an aura. Um, yeah. Now, it is, though, entirely possible that we don't do the Tyrant, because, yeah, that, that is a lot of effort. And then everyone else just shoots with sixes are lethal and, and calls it a day. Yeah. Um, so I think the zone throps get cut. I think it's the first thing we do here. Okay. Uh, the appeal of the Venom Thropes is that they're a six-inch aura of all infantry, or non-monster, whatever, get stealth and cover. That is so good. It's so good. That one is... unit is mandatory, one unit is hard to chain to, two units is better. I think yeah. the units stay. I think they stay. The Biovore is literally auto-populated. I've tried to delete it. It just can't be removed from the list. Yes. The You are doing a thing here, which is you have a lot of infantry, mm -hmm. and there's more than your opponent can deal with. You do not skimp on that concept. No, that is... Uh, ag agreed. The venom, the two Venom Thropes stay. Um, now let me introduce you to... So now we can get the Ripper Swarm and put a Tyrant in. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me introduce you to one more Endless Multitude unit. The Neurogaunt. The Neurogaunt... Oh, this is the dirt cheap one. Does nothing. But does nothing at 90 points or 22 bodies. It, oh, yep, that's that's right. Yeah. So I personally vote that, you know, it's it's funny, like, oh, are 20 Hormigaunts 40 points better than 22 Neurogaunts? Yeah. But then you go 60 to 66, and you're like, ooh, that's 120 points. Okay, all right. So, so are, we, are we looking to change these numbers I, to 22s right here? Is I think that, that goes 22s. So all three of them change to 22. I was, I was honestly just going to do two. And then that's 90 that's points? 90. That is dirt cheap. That is dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. So you're going to go, what, two units of Nurgons? At least two. It's entirely possible the third one sneaks in, but we're starting with two. Okay. That means we actually have a, a decent amount to fiddle with suddenly, and we're, we're still at 180 bodies. I mean, if we, if we leave the Hormigons in, we still have points to fiddle with. True. I mean, we could go on the literal maximum. Um, and also, let me just point out, one of the reasons why I love my Neurogaunts is that they are, while Neurogaunts are in Synapse range, they gain the Synapse keyword and therefore give everyone else that. Because you may have noticed that this entire army is leadership 8, and at the moment there is one Synapse model in there. Can this thing be shot? Is this like ninth edition where you can't shoot it? No, you can just shoot it. So it has to be behind a wall. That's rough. Bro. I, to be clear, was planning on getting another synapse unit in here. Just... Every single last can of your opponent's army is going to be slapping each other in the face, trying to be the one to get the shot on the Turvagon. <laughs> and that <laughs> Turvagon... No other good targets. And the Turvagon is going to be as hid behind a wall as it can possibly be. All right, is there a lone op? With uh, synapse? With synapse. No. 
damn. Yeah. That'll... Rough, bro. I know you may be thinking, well, hold on, John. Surely between the Parasite of Mortrex and the Broodlord, those are both Synapse creatures in 9th edition. Surely something here is a lone op and Synapse. And no, none of those are Synapse anymore. They removed Synapse from a lot of units. It's actually really annoying. Uh, I, I don't know. Akil's always call my shot in the chat. I think that we need a Neurotyrant in here. All right. Because a Neurotyrant, one, can join at Neurogaunts if necessary. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. I think it's literally because it came with the Lithe box. I also think it's because it has the word Neuro. 105. 105? It's not bad, right? Damn, it's that's quite cheap. cheap. Not that's only does cheap. the Neuro Tyrant give you another Synapse creature that is very small and easy to hide. It's only 50 mil base. That yeah. thing just... I'm doing some corner, math right now. ...never gets seen. And then it empowers Neurogons forever. But from this point, it also picks two units within 18 inches in the, um, in the command phase to get Synapse. So the Neuro Tyrant is very good at... Oh, these two units are about to push up and be the screen. Let's go ahead and hand them um, synapse as well. All right. So this list mm -hmm. right here, screen. as yep. it's on the screen, is over by 45. Now, that could be cutting 11 Neurogaunts. I personally think that we have too many Hormagaunts. I mean, Hormagaunts to Neurogaunts puts us over by 5. Yes. Which is the same thing as being over by 45, unfortunately. Um, um, the Ripper Swarm could get... I really like one more thing, Deep Striking, because Hormagant and Neurogant units are, they're all great, but it's actually kind of hard for them to get into a holy. Anytime that a rules, like a secondary says holy within, Hormagants and Termagants are like, well, someone else got to do this. Fair enough. So what we could do mm -hmm. is just remove that wholesale. I would agree. Dink. Now, Swap let's... in yeah. a third unit of Neurogants. Let me get the exact point total on that. Okay. So that would be minus, what was that, 260? Minus 260. Plus 90. We're, we have 125 points left to play with. All right, so I absolutely hate this, but I'm just going to pitch it anyways. Second Neurotyrant Ripper Swarm? No. Oh, I do like the Neurotyrant. Um, no, no, no. Uh, the Psychophage is a big, dumb monster. He's an aura of 6-up Feel Pain. It's better than a 6-up Invul. Yes. Because damage 1 is going to be your Bane, and yep. you get an armor save alongside it. Yes. Um, now, for he, 125 points... Did you points, say he's Synapse? He's not Synapse. He's right? not Synapse. Nope. He's not Synapse. Okay. Um, okay. But you could do that to just have more auras to trail back to. I oh, don't... Is Death Leaper 70 or 75? Oh, he's 70. So we have five more points. Yep. Um, yeah, he used to be 75. But he went down, question mark. Um, and, uh, the point changes for Tyranids made negative sense in every aspect. Um, so 130 points. Could be things like Nero Tyrant, could be stuff like that. I actually am kind of feeling that I want to have a couple Pyrogors. Even though they become Laz Cannon Bait, I like the idea of arriving, tagging an enemy unit with Ignore's Cover, and then you hit it with the entire Termagant package. Do Termagants have any AP on them? Not much, no. Basically, no. But when you target, like, Necron Warriors, I guess it comes up? Yeah. I don't know, there's not a lot of 4-up armor saves in the game that matter. Yeah. And you can't take a 3-up to a 2-up anymore. You can't take a 3-up to a 2-up, so that part's good. I found that there's a lot of random, like... I, I found that there's, like, a decent amount of 4-up armor things that you actually realize you have to kill with Termagants because there's nothing else to kill it with. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, if we do add in the Psychophage, we definitely do not have points for that. Oh, for sure. Um, I, I do I like don't the like Psychophage. This, the thing is that I keep looking at the Psychophage and thinking, is that better than 20 Termagants, which we have already physically capped out on, but I always wonder, could there be more? There, there could be more. Uh, actually, cannot. actually, cannot remember more. how we were five points over? Mm -hmm. um, well, now we're not, because Death Leaper provides. Yep. We could just throw in 20 Hormagons. Yeah, we really could. Yeah, we really should, even, is the is the word I think you're, we're looking for here. Uh, like, you know that's right. One bug more. <laughs> I mean, surely at some point they can't kill all of us, right? Just storm at Area 51. <laughs> they can't shoot us all. Oh, I did the Gaunts twice. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, we're no longer five points over. Thank you, Death Leaper. Um, we've managed to upgrade it from 200 bodies to... Uh, I, this hurts so bad. 226, I think. Yep, we did find... And we other... added a Neuro Tyrant. Yep. God, it feels like we didn't even cut anything besides, like... A we, zoanthrope unit. We cut the zoanthrope unit. We got the somehow we got neurotyrant. Twenty more bodies. 
Yeah, that, yeah. No, that, that's what happened. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Well, that tells me a lot about that zone therapy unit. Oh, what are we doing, John? <laughs> that's a lot of bugs, my guy. What do you think? Should I play this into the next CSM? Yes. His bolters are actually, like, shockingly good there, but he doesn't have enough. Yeah, I get a four up and cover. You also know that, for whatever reason, the uh, the last cans will not make an appearance in that game. Unending back pain? I <laughs> yes. love it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're keeping the, every chiropractor in a three-mile radius in business. <laughs> All right, yeah, I... Yeah, we send it. Yeah, That's we send it. We ship it. Yep. Yeah. Get Corkin. <sighs> play, this, play this list on TTS. Let me know how it goes. Oh, I, I kind of do want to play into this, but I have to put my opponent on a clock. There's just, otherwise I'm going to watch their 40 minute turns and then their 30 minute turns disguised <laughs> as my turns. And I'm just going to die on the inside. Yeah, you Like are. just, uh, just, just charge it. One 20 man screen, six inches in front of the rest of the army at a time. Yeah, you need guns to deal with this. There's no way you can deal with this in melee. <laughs> <laughs> the term you can't just run away when you run up. You're like, oh. That's that's the thing, right? But my Black Temple should start the Terminators on the board. Because yeah. you... What are you going to do? Deep strike on this? Come on. <laughs> what are we doing? Laughable. Yeah. Actually, this into Monocorn would be very funny. Yeah. Wow. Who goes first? That person draws a line. No one crosses it. <laughs> yes. Ugh. All right. Yeah. That's... um. This I, is the Unending Swarm. I do think the Termagants would table demons so fast. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, all, your, the, all your monsters that I get lethal and sustained fives against uh, and reroll wounds, they have a four-up save? There is also the very funny thing where as soon as someone fails a battle shock test and you get the plus one to wound against them from the Neuralectors, Twin Linked Strength 3 wounds demons like a great and clean one more than half the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I would never... Like, no joke, like 32 shots puts more than 20 saves on a great and clean one. This list is very trolly. It is. Trolly. It is... I would never run it. Uh, I, I physically cannot. But, oh my god, it's so trolly. Oh, yeah, what have we done? Hold on. I, I'm actually just doing the math before we do the next one. I'm curious how many saves you put on a great and clean one with uh, 16 <laughs> spine fists when, you, when it fails battle shock test. Because this is going to make me happy. Yes. All right. Do, do, do. Man, that neuro tyrant, it does need to be in there. Because if the turvagon goes down, you lose the game, basically on the spot. Because you just battle shocked all over the place. Units can't hold objectives. It right. gets rough very fast. You put before so the before you fire the special weapons, you put an average of nineteen point five saves on a great and clean one. That's like five damage. Yeah, yeah. probably. It's like it's like a four. But you fire four save. all your turn and he drops like every time. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, because you know the great and clean one's like I don't have to worry about this nonsense. Go <laughs> and then you just table. Yeah, them. like when you're gonna, like when you see this list, you you realize oh wow if I play KG every objective has. 32 OC on it by the end of turn one, and I never touch it again. Yeah. And also, there so will be a hundred man screen in front of those objectives. Yeah. <laughs> like, there will be a line in the sand that's a hundred dudes just hands across America. And, like, if, the you, board, if you try to shoot the them, it they, is... like, they sprint into you and tag you before you declare the charge, which means not, not only have you not fought first, you haven't declared a charge. And if you go within nine, they can either run away or they can run towards you, and then you get a shot, and then they're in combat with you. Yes. <laughs> I, like I don't think this is broken. It's not. It's not broken. It's just so funny. It is very funny. I like. I, I don't think either of the detachments that we talked about. They have some nonsense. They have mm -hmm. some poorly written things. But I don't think they're broken. I just think if you find yourself on the wrong end of their nonsense, you are going to be having a bad time. Absolutely. All right. On the other hand, like one gladiator reaper, tyranids hate this one weird trick. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, WTF Chicken is in the chat. Whoop! He's WTF in the chat. Chicken. I saw him. He didn't know his list was picked. His list is picked. It's here. All right. Assimilation Swarm. Oh, yeah. We got the is. life cycle of the Tyranids. We've got the Vanguard Onslaught first. We've got the Unending Swarm being nonsense in the middle. Then we got the Assimilation Swarm to pick up the remains. See, it's very thematic. Here. It's extreme. We are very fluffy on our yes. We did this in the actual best order. Yes, um, it, yes WTF Chicken. Uh, we're going to fit. 200 termagants within 12 inches of the great unclean one no problem works every every time. every single time every single time <laughs> but also the great unclean one what if it only takes 18 damage and then gets charged and tagged and dies the following turn <laughs> like nobody cares yeah they're pistols Dead. like it's not a big deal yeah like just get it in combat and then fire the pistols oh yeah there, there's tons of stuff that can kill all the all the gaunts like don't don't get me wrong there's tons of stuff but yeah, like, that world leader's army absolutely does kill every gaunt it is in combat with every turn unfortunately uh it is tough to get them in combat fast enough 
But we'll it see. is a real question. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a real question. So we've got the assimilation swarm here. This is my favorite. Uh, two neurotyrants, the parasite of Mortrex with biophagic flow. Thank you so much for taking that. What does it do? All right. The assimilation swarm? Y yes, and the biophagic okay. flow assimilation Nine swarm. Nine pyrovore. All right, you know, it's fine. I'll tell you what the assimilation swarm does before we talk about the list. Because this is the context that probably matters. So the assimilation swarm points in a very specific direction. Eat. Take the things that eat. Those things, which is Ripper, Psychophage, uh, Pyrovore, and um, Horospex. While those models are on an objective you control. In your command phase, pick a Tyranid within six inches. It either heals D3 models or one infantry model at full health or three unending swarm models or endless multitude models. So you just heal. Is this per unit that's on the objective or per objective that has a unit on it? Per unit on objective. Okay. So this list happens to have 11 of those units. So theoretically you could heal 11 wounded things, D3 wounds. Oh, it has to be different units. It has to be different units. Got it. Yep. Okay. Uh, but then the stratagems bring in a lot of different ways to heal out of sequence. For example, you kill something in combat, heal. You Your opponent kills a Tyranid unit, recycle, heal. Well, you do know what one of my favorite things to do in 40k is. Not die? Which is, your opponent hits you, and then you just undo it. You just hit the undo button. Yep. So, this list is hilarious in so many ways. So, all right, Parasite of Mortrex, awesome. Uh, the Biophagic Flow is a, what is it? It's a 12 inch aura of increase the six inch heal to a nine inch heal. Yeah, it's an aura. It's a six it's an, inch aura to increase a, it's other a 12 auras. inch aura of. 12 inch, it's an aura to increase auras. Yes, it's a 12 inch aura of plus three to the heal aura. Sounds good. So, you put it on a load up, right? Seems good. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, and then you, uh, that's the only enhancement we have here, which is completely fine, if I'm being honest. Um, but we, uh, we, we've got the big funny now, which is... <laughs> Nine power force. Yeah. Three, um, six venom throws. And then the, the other thing that's worth noting... And they're this so is, cheap! Yeah, I know, right? Uh, 80 mil bases, this arm's getting shot, no problem, we heal. Um, so the Ablative Carapace, which is my favorite thing, is two CP, uh, one Harvester unit, which is one of the four I just mentioned... Gets a five up, feel no pain. The harvesters are Harrispex, Psychophage, Pyrovore, and Ripper. Ripper. So once it's two CP, get a five up, feel no pain. Wow, that does actually sound that good. Unless you're on an objective, then it's a four up, feel no pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I like how the um, the invasion fleet is like, oh, you get a six up, feel no pain. But if you're in Synapse, you get a five up. And that's just like... For free. <laughs> yeah, it's 1 CP. Awesome. This is a 4-up only for Harvesters on objectives. But, um, but like, do that, right? Just just do that. Please tell me it's uh, not a battle tactic. It is not a battle tactic. Okay. This is the detachment that doesn't have good battle tactics. So this is the one. detachment where... Uh, you don't take a Tyrant. Probably not take I a Tyrant. I love the Tyrant. You don't take a Tyrant here. Um, you can make your CP reroll free. You, you can do it again. You, you could. Um, yes, Tyranid lists are insane, and you should love them. Uh, this is the coolest thing. So, with the Tyrant Guard... Man, I'm so looking forward to the armies that I actually play getting codexes, if this is what they're doing. <laughs> it's of so just making, fun. They're just making ridiculous <laughs> nonsense, and they're like, here you go. And it's not like... I, no, it's not like broken ridiculous nonsense, it's like fun ridiculous nonsense, and I like that. pretty fun ridiculous nonsense. So, between the Pyrovores and the Tyrant Guard, you have very good infantry models to heal with the Assimilation Swarm, because you just stand up a destroyed infantry model on full wounds. So, like, you stand up a Pyrovore... No joke, so I, I had a thing where I shot a Pyrovore unit in a tiered of mirror mesh in the simulation swarm. And I shot a Pyrovore unit, he pops for feeling pain, I only kill one of them, and I'm like, whatever, I, I'm going to stop dealing with this. And then I was like, whatever, I'm going to just do my thing. And I accidentally, me the fool that I am, shot a spore mine vaguely near the Pyrovores. And he said, I'm going to spend a CP because you destroyed a Tyranid unit, and now, boop, heal the Pyrovore. What? If a Tyranid unit dies within six inches of a harvester, you can spend a CP to immediately just regenerate something else by literally recycling the dead bugs into live bugs. A, cool. So cool, right? Super cool. B, yes. what? He spent a CP to turn a dead spore mine into a full health pyrovore with a fart field of pain. Yeah. Uh, Grey Knights is actually a very bad example of an army that would get a codex because what rules are they going to give you that's better that, 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 you know, it's better than the teleportarium or whatever that yeah, we right? have. You do have to wonder. Um, so yeah, so very, very funny things here. Um, the last thing that I'll mention, 
which Jack just needs to know about, is Broodguard Impulse. One CP in any phase when a Harvester unit is destroyed. You get plus one to wound against whoever killed the Harvester unit. Let's point out that the three solo Ripper Swarms are in fact Harvester units. So if you Is it for the rest of the game? Yes. You get plus one to wound? Yes. So a Ripper dies and the Tyrant Guard are like, UNACCEPTABLE! <laughs> yes, the Ripper Guard. Okay. Yeah, no, more. you charge a Ripper Swarm into Mortarian. Come on. And then for the rest of the game, you get plus one to wound Your him? Your army's plus one to wound him. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah, that's it. That's all like, this detachment does. Again, not broken, just ridiculous. <laughs> that's all this detachment does. I need you to know that. All right. <laughs> So, in my mind, we uh, this detachment has the unfortunate, almost problem, of really forcing you to take certain things. Because there are only four units that do the rule, and once you don't have those four units alive, none of your rules exist. That does suck. Because all your units, all your stratagems are one harvester unit, or one unit within six of a harvester, or something like along those lines. Now, luckily, we've already taken maximum pyrovores, and maximum, maximum harospex is just and maximum ripper swarms. I and we're only one shy of getting the full yeah, bunch. I actually think I'm going to cut a psychophage. I think one is fine. What you, dude? I what, I'm sir? so sorry, but like, come on. <laughs> like, there's a point here. Um, the cute trick here is that the neuro tyrants attached to the tyrant guard, so you have big beefy T8 units of infantry that do get cover and do get to heal. Um, yes, this list does need three neural lectures. Someone said two in the chat. It's so silly. Three neural lectures, every list. Excommunicated. Um, from I the bug, think, however, bug swarm. that there's a couple things in this list that are not contributing. Uh, I think that the Von Ryan sleepers, to my great regret, are not contributing because that should be a neural lector. Adios, muchacho. All right. Um, I also think that two neuro tyrants and tyrant guards, even though it's very very funny because they're infantry and they can heal i don't think it's very good because uh if you attach the neuro tyrants if you don't take any like if you don't attach the neuro tyrants to the tyrant card they just don't do anything is the problem is that they are not fast and they don't do anything including damage but we need something to actually use the rules that this army has and like Agreed. nine pyrovores does not I feel am like the thing personally in favor of monsters not infantry just healing them three every time anyone blinks? Yeah, just basically doing that. Is it three or is it... It's D3. D3. Well, that's much worse. So, counterpoint, what if that thing was a Nor not a primary objective? I hate that I can't just get up and leave right now. Yes, yeah, you are... There's a table right in front of me. You are contractually obligated to stay here. Not even contractually, like physically. Like, I would have to bowl you over to get out of yeah, here. You know I'm going to try to keep you there. Make uh, you suffer through this as long as possible. Fine. Like, I'm sorry, but let's let's look at what we're healing. Right? Norn me up. Uh, the list, he would prefer that the guard stay. Oh, WTF chicken wants... <laughs> is a rework of an 18 Tyrant Guard list? I mean, we could go back there. What do Tyrant Guard do? For the, for the Just for the starters. Are they minus one to wound? No. What's their role? Uh, the leader, the character in the unit has a 5-up feeling. Well, that's garbage. It's so bad. Um, they are 4-wound, T8, 3-up, not 2-up, save models. They lost the armor save. Here's the other problem. And this is not the addition to lose a point of armor no, save from 2 to 3. bad time to go from 2 to 3. Because you can't get cover back to a 2-up. Here's the problem. It's the firewall right there. You give, the Venom Thropes give cover and minus 1 to hit to all units that don't have the monster keyword. If you attach a Neuro Tyrant, to Tyrant Guard, they lose the minus one to hit. With the Neuro... What, what? The Neuro Tyrant is a monster. Right. So if you attach a Neuro Tyrant to Tyrant Guard, it loses the Venom Throw benefit. So I can... Exciting. I can, yeah, I can endorse keeping the six Does it say non-monster or does it say it, infantry? It doesn't say infantry. It says besides monster. Shame. I went to check. Damn. Tyranid units get cover and um, uh, excluding see. and excluding monsters, which they self. become when you attach a, a neuro, neuro tyrant. tyrant. So first thing first, I think the one neuro tyrant gets cut. One of them stays. I think one of them's just gone. Beep, boop. Gone. Because unfortunately, if you attach neuro tyrants to tyrant guard, you are making the tyrant guard actively less durable. I also, <laughs> I, dude, I don't know what to tell you. 
So, Cam, mm-hmm. they went from a 2-up in 9th edition to a 3-up in 10th edition, yeah. which means that they cannot go from their now current 3-up armor save back to a 2-up with cover. A 2-up save can get cover, get bonuses, armor content. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. Yeah, that part's pretty uh, cool. But when you have a 3-up base... Sorry, Bucko. It's just never getting better than a 3-up. A 1 yeah, or 2 will s- always fail if you started on a 3-up. Yeah. Um, so... And, yeah, unless you have some rule that says you get plus one to your save, which I don't think anyone has. There are not many of those. Yeah. Um, so there, there are a couple of things that I want to add here. Because I there's more things I want to I want to cut, but right now there's things I want to like think about. And that is that the Assimilation Swarm does have another enhancement that I actually really want, which is plus one strength to the melee weapons equipped by unit. And if the uh, if you destroy an enemy unit while within six inches of a harvester, you also get plus one attack for the rest of the game. To the um, unit or the model? Unit. Unit that is pretty good. And what is your entire warrior. card that we care about, or warriors, or something? Warriors, warriors. So what I really want is a Tyranid warrior unit that goes to strength six twin linked instead of strength five twin linked. All right, that sounds like a break point that I would kill for. Let's go. Just borrow that from Joel real fast. Great, thanks, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Your real gem. All right, and then let's go ahead and add a. Uh, let's go ahead and add, snag a Tyranid prime with an enhancement as well. We'll just change the name. Yep, we're just gonna run wander over here. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Joel. You you've done some great work here. And let and me he's know also when you're ready to type that enhancement. I am parasitic biomorphology, because of course that's what they called it. I'm trying to find out the points cost right now. Done. Uh, simulation. Eh, twenty five. I'm fine with that. So, so it takes just it to 90. ninety. Yeah, no problem. Yes. So with that in mind, we have forty five points left on this list on, on screen. This list on screen. Um. Well, that's funny. 45 points left is like 20 points away from being 65 points. All right, so we're keeping the 6 tire card. The 12 tire card. The 12 tire card. We're keeping both of those. I think you just don't attach the Neurotyrant. No, you, you don't attach the Neurotyrant. You, you just... just tire but, card, but a Neurotyrant is valuable in, on its own. Um, I think we can cut one Venom Therapy unit here. just don't think we need both. Are you sure? Before I hit delete, are you no, sure on yep, that? No, kill it. It's right. dead. Okay. It's just not... One is cute, but you you don't need it all the time. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, I would like <clears throat> several neurolictors. I think you get two. Well, you Do need to find again. fifty points. Great, got a record. Fifteen points. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry, but every single tier in the list gets two neurolictors. Joel contributes one final time. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. You're here. I am desperate to get neurolictors in. Why? Because they have been literally amazing every single time they have graced a battlefield. All right, we have five points left. Is there any funny business we can do with five points? You know, I don't think there is. But just looking at it, what I what I wanted here was I wanted... So we don't have any Norns. So I think, I think unfortunately, Norns would be taking the list in a different direction. Yeah, you see these Warriors, you see these Tyrant Guard and these Tyrant Guard. And then this character... I actually here. like the Warriors. But I would... How many points is a, is a Norn? 290. Oh, yeah, that's taking a way different direction. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's how I would take the Assimilation Swarm, is I would do Triple Norn. Because what I'm looking at is that I want the Assimilation Swarm to get maximum value out of its rules. I want to, therefore, have as many, as efficient of wounds as possible. And the Norn Emissary is the toughest wound I can buy. This is a 4-up feel no pain. Because it is a 5-up a feel no pain, 4-up against mortals, 4-up in T11, 2-up save. So that's a four up on an objective that it picks or something. It is a five up on objective it picks and then a four up against mortals. I see. The tyrant guard, can you bring a whole model back when you yeah. uh, when you res? Every time you res, like that is cool. That's very because like D three models with D three wounds with a five up feel no pain versus a four wound model. Mm-hmm. The four wound model is yeah. often better, but high toughness, good save. High toughness, high save, invuln. Sometimes it's better. I, I like the tyrant guard. I don't think I want two of them if I'm being honest. Where I would objectively go if I went triple Norn is I would trim the Pyrovores from 9 to 5. I would trim one Horus Spex and a Psychophage, trim the Warrior and a Tyrant Guard unit, and then plug in Norns until I'm over points, and then look from there. Yeah. Yeah. The Norns are interesting. Um, I, I like putting models back on the board. That does feel nice. Putting models back on the board is great, but also like healing multiple Norns on objectives just sounds like a way to primary town. Like, come on! Like yeah, that sounds sound, fun. That sounds that fun. sounds good. So is there, <laughs> you take three Norns, you pick the three objectives in mid board, and you go there. And uh, yeah, I mean that that can work. We've seen it actually. Yeah, no, I've I've felt it. Yeah, 
Three Norns just standing with OC-15 on objectives? Woof. Mm-hmm. Did you know... Did you know that a uh, that a Lich Guard unit is OC-14? When it's not Battleshocked? Sure, 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 sure. I'm just saying, 15 is one bigger than 14. Ah, yes, excellent. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do love Zone Thropes. I don't think they fit here. They just they do not provide any synergy to specifically this list. Because the things you want to shoot can probably just consciously choose not to shoot at a Ripper Swarm. Um, yeah. And you have to, like, charge the Ripper Swarm in, and then a, turn, then a turn long. later you shoot them with, you know, your Zone Thropes. Yeah, I, 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 don't yeah, I, don't I don't think it's worth it. Um, but overall, I think this is hilarious. Yes. Um, God, I want to run the assimilation swarm. I think I think when I when I get my next two Norns in, because I've, I've ordered several, um, when I get the rest of my Norns in, I think I'm going to try the assimilation swarm because I think it's just the most fun. Um, so that is the end of the video. I think, That's right? it for us for today. Uh, so thank you so much to everyone who submitted their list to fix my list, and thank you uh, to everyone who's watching. If you're watching this and you think, "Good golly, Miss Molly, this looked like fun." I would love it if my list were to be on Fix My List. Don't worry, there's hope for you yet. All you have to do is go to the Art of War Discord and submit your list to Fix My List submissions. Usually Jack puts out a call uh, right when he's getting ready to, uh, to write it. Mm -hmm. And if they want to get in that Art of War Discord, Jack, how are you going to get there? So you want to go to thewarroom.vhx.tv. That's kind of mm -hmm. a long uh, URL, but you can check out the link in the description below. There's a three-day free trial. So if you wanted to get your list in for next week, which I believe is Imperium Armies. Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, interesting. Imperium Armies, we will be reviewing it to the two of us. If you want to get your list in, there's a there's a three-day free trial. Mm -hmm. And you can also check out all of our videos on our website. We do coaching, extra coaching matches. So if you like the matches that we do every Wednesday on YouTube, we also do two more in the War Room. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have uh, State of the Faction, which is a series we're doing right now with the uh, all the changes with the balanced data slate. That is out if you want to see how your army is doing. They're coming out one a day. Uh, various other various other videos we have mm -hmm. in the same vein teaching you different aspects of 40K or different aspects of different armies. So feel free to check all of that out. And we have some super chats absolutely so let's hit the super chats we got again thank you so much everyone for your support and your patience as we save those to the end uh let's start off with a uh, mithril blade 04 with their super chat quick question that isn't tiered related heretical does lord solar's redeploy let you start a flyer on the table came up in my local group and wanted to ask the pros uh, my understanding is no because it, it lets you redeploy units on the table into reserves I don't think it lets you take a unit that was in reserves and put it on the table. I would also say that like a redeploy has to deploy them in the way that they would be deployed. Yeah, it, it does. It does say that you can take a unit that's on the table and put it in reserves. But yeah. That's a specific thing they mention. I don't think it works both ways. I don't think it's a two-way street. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Relic Scuppin with a two-dollar super chat. Thank you. Very fun fit video. Thanks, fellas. Thank you, Relic Scuppin. We appreciate you being in here. All right. All right. I think that wraps us up for now. So make sure you like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe because trust me, we've got a lot more exciting Tyranid content coming your way soon. As a matter of fact, we're actually doing a build list Tyranids in less than 24 hours. So uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get notified when we go live tomorrow morning talking about nids. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.